Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be a very sad one, actually. Uh, so many of you know I've been playing a lot of Nightingale lately, and I really, really like this game. And then I saw this today. So I'm going to read the message from the devs that was posted on the Discord earlier today. And then I'm going to go over some articles regarding the situation. And then at the end, I'll give my thoughts. So let's get started. Realm Walkers. The past few weeks here at Inflection Games have been incredibly challenging and no words can adequately express the sadness we feel. Like many other studios over the past few years, we have been hit by the stark realities of the industry, and after exploring every possible option, we've had to make the difficult decision to let go of some of our remarkable and talented team members. Although we're proud of what we've accomplished with Nightingale as to date, as well as the enthusiasm and support from our community, the early access release hasn't been commercially successful enough to continue development at our studio's previous size. As a result, we're undergoing a restructuring process in Canada, and we will also be closing our UK office. Our priority is to support each member of the team affected by the reductions as they search for new opportunities. We thank them for their invaluable contributions to Nightingale. It would not have been possible without their immense talent and passion for adventuring in the Feywilds. While this is a difficult moment for the entire team, we will continue to work tirelessly along our players as we move forward as a studio. I will be available to answer questions from the community and will provide more details on our upcoming updates soon. In the meantime, I hope our players will join me in expressing heartfelt thanks to our departing team members for everything they've contributed. Aaron Flynn, CEO of Inflection Games. When I saw this, I was just like, damn. So I wanted to see what some of these articles were popping up saying. So we're going to go over a few of them. So there's one here from PC Gamer. Uh, with the title, Despite Making Significant Changes to Survival Game, Nightingale Developer Inflection Games says it hasn't been, quote, commercially successful enough, end quote, to avoid dozens of layoffs. So apparently they're going through some kind of restructuring and they're closing their UK office, which is, you know, what they just announced, obviously. Um, but, you know, it kind of makes me wonder, like, how many people are actually being laid off. Uh, I was looking through um, the article a little bit. Former senior audio designer... Tom Avis seemed to imply in a LinkedIn message that these layoffs signaled the end of Nightingale, writing, it's painful that we couldn't see the game through to its final form, but I hope players continue to enjoy the early access version as there's a lot we should be proud of in a reply tweet. However, Inflection said development will continue and that the news on the future updates will be shared soon. Now, that's kind of a big deal. Um, I mean, with that wording, it does kind of sound like, you know, this is the end, but I don't know. Uh, from what it seems like, this probably isn't the end. I mean, the game is still in early access. Um, I mean, I know that sometimes stuff like this does happen with early access games. There's always that risk that, you know, even if you buy an early access game, you know, you might not even see it, you know, through to fruition, essentially, to its final form. Um, a lot of what they've worked on has been kind of restructured but they retained a lot of the same elements of things that they had but i mean if you look at the recent update with the realms rebuilt uh, i mean you might as well call it realms reborn because it was just i mean a complete overhaul of the beginning of the game how it's structured and things like that i think that the game now in its current state is a lot better than how it was when the early access, you know, initial launch happened. But we have to go back in time and talk a little bit about that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to that and talk about it and, and tie it into why I'm, we're seeing layoffs here uh, now or why I suspect this is uh, happening, which is really unfortunate. So this other article by a game developer, Nightingale Dev and Inf Inflection Games lays off staff as UK office shuts down. You know, it's the same thing here. Um, I, there wasn't any major thing, but something that this article pointed out that I thought was interesting is that they said that prior to Nightingale's launch, Inflection was acquired by Tencent in 2022. The studio has put all its attention on the fantasy survival game, including enabling it to be played offline at some point in the game's lifetime. 
Lynn stated more information on the game's future updates will be provided soon. So that's something I actually didn't know. I didn't know that Tencent bought them out in 2022. At the time, I wasn't even playing Nightingale. I didn't play Nightingale until uh, 2023 when the um, initial early access drop is when I you know, started playing around that time. And I remember when that first launch happened, there was a lot of issues. There was no offline mode at the time. Uh, so this kind of leads back to a larger discussion that I've seen other players say uh, just in general about gaming lately that, you know, not every game has to be connected to the Internet or not every game has to be an MMO or not every game has to be this or that. Now, I think there's other contributing factors as to why this game has like kind of, you know, flopped early. Um I remember when I first started playing, it was literally unplayable because the lag was just too much. The servers were too unstable. Um, there were issues where people's uh, abeyance realms were like, you know, like their their buildings that they made or the, their homes that they made were basically like erasing or they weren't able to retrieve it or something like that. That was really frustrating for some players. Um, they eventually cracked down on that bug and I don't think people are experiencing that anymore, but I mean, it's not a good start or a good impression when you first start, you know, or pick up a game like this. So I can only imagine the frustration some people were having. I actually took a break from the game after the initial launch and I decided, OK, this game is really interesting. I like the idea behind it, but I don't think it's quite cooked enough yet. And I think it needs some time. So I actually decided to take a break from Nightingale and um, then they released the offline mode. And when they had released offline mode, that's when I started picking up the game again, because for me personally, I prefer to play offline. Now, there's going to be a lot of people out there who prefer to play with their friends or who have that desire to play with their friends. You know, that's great. Right. I think that people should be able to do that. That being said, you know, I think the offline mode addition was definitely a good thing. It might even it wouldn't surprise me if that ends up being the saving grace of the game later on. Uh, at least I hope so, but we'll have to see. Um, so this last article here says dozens of staff laid off at inflection as part of restructuring. And there was something here at the bottom that kind of caught my eye. So near the end of this article, uh, there's a section here that says an inflection staff member who wished to remain anonymous separately told gamesindustry.biz that the number of employees potentially impacted by the layoffs is reportedly at least 22 people based on internal communications they've had access to. Now, that being said, I'm not sure exactly how many people worked for the studio in total, if you counted both branches, because there's a there's a Canada branch and then there's a UK branch, which I didn't even realize at the time. Uh, but now I'm looking you know, closely at this and I'm kind of wondering at the bottom here is also going back to the Tencent acquisition. It says here, the Edmonton based developer was founded by former Bioware general manager, Aaron Flynn in 2018, as part of improbable. The latter sold the studio to Tencent back in 2022 with Flynn telling us back in February that since the acquisition, the company had been quote, nothing but gracious and supportive and aligned on the belief and recognition that inflection wants to be successful with Nightingale and then build and grow and evolve from there. End quote. I mean, this kind of raises some questions, right? So let's assume that's true. If they laid off like 22 people, first of all, I'm really sorry to, you know, those people who got laid off. I mean, that's awful. Um, you know, I wish you all the best. I try not to get too riled up by, you know, games that are like early access when things like this happen. Uh, I know for like example, I've talked about on this channel, Palea, you know, they're, they're in like open beta and they had, you know, some issues there and, you know, there's been waves and waves of layoffs. Whereas like, as far as I know, I think this is the first wave of layoffs. I shouldn't say cycle because this had, to my knowledge, this hasn't happened before, but I could be wrong. I just want to add a small interjection here in the middle of the video. Um, I was literally about to post the video and then the devs came out with a official, you know, statement on their YouTube channel. So I'm just going to show a small portion of that here uh, as far as what they had to say regarding the matter. Uh, you can check out the video for yourself. The entire video is about five and a half minutes long. I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you guys can go check that out. But uh, here's a small portion of that video. Regrettably, this is this is the face of the game, the modern games industry. This is, is this extraordinarily tough um, 
at a human level, you know, we had to let friends, colleagues go yesterday. Aaron and I certainly take responsibility for those decisions, um, but that doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make it easier for the people who have lost their jobs. Uh, it doesn't make it easier for the people who are still in inflection. But, you know, as a result of this, it allows inflection to continue. Uh, and we desperately want to continue to bring more content for Nightingale to, to, to the players out there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you said, no excuses. We all work in the same industry. You know, we're, we're tremendously um, fast and interested and, uh, you know, congratulatory to those teams that are winning in this industry. Um, and, and we hold ourselves to that standard uh, and we didn't in this case and resulting in this change. Um, and we just have to learn and grow and try to improve to this and take these lessons uh, to heart and do our best with, with um, uh, the, the team members we have now and, and go forward as best we can. Um, but again, uh, as our community players who, you know, have given so much of your time uh, and your money to us, uh, you know, you're going to see this and we want to make sure that you heard it from us as to what had happened and, and why it happened. You know, we just, you know, studio was just too expensive. Studio just needs to be smaller and nimbler uh, in these things, um, like so many other studios right now in the, in the industry. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've, if you've been part of those studios, you know that, that these studios are, are built up and composed of nothing but good people who are working hard and trying to deliver to a vision and trying to make something that you all love. Uh, and more often than not, that's not working these days. Um, and as Neil said, we take responsibility for that. It's Neil's and my job and, and others at our studio here to plan, to prepare, to, to set everybody up for success. Uh, and we tried our best and we missed and we didn't achieve some things that we fully expected to. We're going to keep doing our best with more updates. Um, we do have some things to come, but again, we'll save those details for later. Um, and just to say, uh, you know, we're going to do our best to keep going. And uh, again, a huge thanks to everybody who's, uh, who's made Nightingale what it is. So what led to this, right? We, we should probably talk a little bit about what probably led to this. Now, I have a few guesses and I think it's like a bunch of contributing factors. So the first one I would point out is the initial rough launch. Um, when Nightingale first released, the launch was very bad. And when I say very bad, I mean the game was literally unplayable. Uh, I remember trying to play it on stream for the first time and it was so bad with the disconnections and things like that. I, I couldn't showcase the game on stream essentially because of these issues. And I remember waiting a little bit, then it got better. And then I eventually, you know, after seeing how like confusing the setup was and convoluted the setup was, you know, I feel like the game needed a little bit more baking in the oven. So when they came out with the offline mode, I had some hope because I was like, OK, well, what what benefits does that bring? And something they brought in, which I would argue is probably one of the best parts of it is the pause button. I know. Ironic, right? Like, you know, when you when you choose not to play, it's the best time, apparently. But it's so unfortunate because I feel like they went into it like imagining like this huge like MMO experience, right? Like they wanted to make this huge like kind of like MMO game with lots of people playing and stuff like that. And I feel like in this current gaming environment that we're seeing today, this isn't really as viable as it once was, um, especially with, you know, the economy breaking down everywhere, especially with, you know, dozens of layoffs happening or hundreds of layoffs even uh, happening throughout the gaming industry in the last few months in the last year i mean it's not a good sign um so this doesn't exactly surprise me there's also um like i said you know the initial launch was really rough it was so bad that they actually put a kind of like a pause on what they were doing went back and revised the game and that's how we got uh realms rebuilt now realms rebuilt has been pretty successful so far because people have you know, pe the people who did come back to try it uh, came back and left good reviews or they revised their reviews and made it positive. You know, there was a lot of people who went back and were like, OK, this is a significant improvement. This is great. Um, and it just doesn't seem to be enough. It's almost like, you know, they 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 launched the game with the initial release. Right. Then they lost the momentum there. By the time the offline mode came along, you know, a lot of people had already left and didn't want to come back. Uh, I know some people who they started playing, they liked the game initially, but then maybe they saw a few bugs that were just kind of game breaking or that they didn't like, or they got frustrated or they found the whole experience to be confusing. So they just never came back. So I think the real question here is now that the game is in a much better place, at what point can we try to even attempt to bring people back? Because there was a lot of initial interest in this game and now it's just kind of teetered off 
into the distance and it's really hard to watch because i mean a lot of people who are still playing this game they seem to be very passionate about it so it, it's it's one of those things where you know it's kind of like they, they left a bad first impression and now uh despite making some really really good changes really really good updates you know and brought us basically up to speed to the same place we were with the initial launch as far as uh progression goes um it, what now right so we still haven't gotten to nightingale city we haven't you know seen the rest of the game yet and that's something that that they had planned to work on when they had put the game into early access um according to their store page which i just checked before i made this video they plan to be in early access from 9 to 12 months it wouldn't surprise me if they push it back a little bit because remember they also delayed the initial early access launch the early access launch was supposed to happen i think at the end of like 2022 i want to say but it ended up getting pushed back to like early 2023 so that's just one contributing factor right Another contributing factor to why I think this game is struggling is that when at the time, right, that the game came out, uh, Enshrouded came out like almost around the same time. Like, I think they came out like, I don't remember if it was like the same week or like this, within the same two week span or something like that, but they came out really, really close to each other. And this was also on the back end of Power World. So... I mean, to have another survival game come out and have to compete with two really popular games at the same time, plus having the initial bad taste, people are going to remember that and they're going to think, oh man, you know, well, I don't think I'm going to try Nightingale again. I'd rather just play Power World or, oh, I'm not going to try, you know, Nightingale again. I'd rather just play Enshrouded. And it looks like Enshrouded has actually grown since then, uh, from what I can see, uh, just, you know looking at it casually so it kind of brings to question you know what can we do here to save this game like i like i mean when i say we i mean like the devs right like if i were in their shoes like what could they possibly do to bring this back and you know i it kind of makes me wonder like what do you guys think do you think that you know we're gonna see the game come to fruition as the final product do you think they're going to maybe you know like my theory maybe delay the games uh and final release or a uh, big release uh it wouldn't surprise me or actually i think something that the game could actually benefit from would be maybe even a detachment from you know their servers so maybe something they could consider would be re and i don't know what kind of technical magic this would take uh in order to get this to happen but if you allowed players to you know host their own servers for this game i mean why not like think about it we have other survival games in the same kind of space like power world be rising uh and shrouded i think is another game uh valheim you know games like that that all kind of fill with that survival space right and all of them you have the ability to host your own servers why can't we have that for nightingale you know if people are enjoying the game that much you know why can't there be in a, a like i don't know some kind of shared abeyance realm that you can share with your friends or something like i don't know like i don't know how they would even pull that off and i'm not sure exactly how that could even be structured especially because we have realms that are procedurally generated i guess what i'm trying to say is i'm not sure if the game can be saved with its current vision in mind because i don't think players are going to be sticking around all the time playing the game you know in a way that's as like like it's not unnatural for um survival games especially to come out have a big you know uh, initial player base and then it just kind of teeters off over time it falls off over time you know uh the same thing happens with like power world power world is another you know very popular game you know initial interest and then teeter initial interest and teeter you know that's not abnormal so i i kind of wonder like what numbers did they have to hit in order for them to stay at the size they were at i don't know it, it's one of those things where i look at it and it makes me worry but I'm not going to put the, we're screwed guys, it's over. You know, I'm not going to throw up the, 
I'm not going to throw up the white flag until, you know, it's it's actually over because I think this game can eke it out. I think this game can, you know, maybe bring back players and kind of, you know, find a way back onto a path of success. I just don't think it's going to be the game they thought it would be when they went into it just because of a few different factors. So, for example, the gaming environment uh similar games that have released that have a different way that they've structured themselves um between the competition in the market the economy uh the lack of player retention that's another big one um it's really rough out there so i mean i can't i can't help but wonder like what are they going to do so would this be the beginning of the end? That is the question I ask myself, and that's the question I ask you guys. What do you think? Do you think that Nightingale will be seen to the end? Do you think it will um, not be finished and maybe even just be an incomplete game for the rest of its life? Do you think that, you know, we're going to see some other shenanigans happen? I mean, I, I seriously wonder because, like, I don't know. I, I really feel like if, if I had to give my two cents, on what I think they should do, just like based on my own playing experience, I think they should either find a way to allow players to host their own servers for the game or uh, create a way for players to kind of host the game locally and invite, you know, their friends on Steam or something to play alongside them. You know, so I, that's the only thing I can really think of to kind of make sense of this. But I don't really see a reason why it needs to be connected to like a bigger, you know, server or to their servers. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Uh, do you think I'm, you know, worrying too much? Do you think this is the beginning of the end? Do you think this is a sign that the game might not be completed to fruition? Do you think that the game will be just fine, but it might take a while? Like, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments below. For those of you who don't know, my name is Shiloh Q. I'm a Shiloh's Queenly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld, and I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. Uh, you can find a few of my Nightingale streams from the past if you go and check that out, uh, especially on my YouTube channel. And on the YouTube channel, I also have a Let's Play series that I'm currently working on, and you can only imagine how sad I am seeing this news as I'm working on it. So yeah, that that's definitely um, something to keep in mind. But either way, I really like this game. I hope that you know the people who got laid off today are able to find uh, employment elsewhere, that they're able to kind of get back on their feet, and that that transition from workplace to workplace isn't going to be too much for them. I feel really bad about that. Like I, like I can only imagine, you know, the heartbreak that comes with this kind of thing. So I, I really wish them all the best and the best of luck. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, share and subscribe. And as always, Sholo out.